Okay, it's been a pretty hectic couple of weeks, um, and at long last I've been able to find the time to get a video done. So I'm going to get a quick video done tonight. Judging by US futures and the Australian dollar, um, we're going to have a fairly strong night tonight. As I speak, US futures are up somewhere around the 125 mark, I think it was. Who's to say it's going to hold that, but it's going pretty crazy. Um, Australian dollar is somewhere around just under 107, so pretty crazy stuff at the moment, and whether we can hold or not is another thing. But um, yeah, I'll just sort of throw a few charts, and most of these, if we are this strong in the morning, are obviously going to gap. My plan will be to lock longs in heading into Easter. We've got a five-day break for Easter, three trading days off US, I think only has one trading day off, so... Those two extra sessions are just a little bit risky for me to not be able to do anything about my position, so I'll be going very light into Easter. All right, quick look. That's the hourly on the XJO. Let's just go to the daily. Okay, that's the daily XJO. Uh, as you can see, fairly strong bounce today. Probably the only thing I really want to comment on with this is come the weakness that we've had earlier in the week um, and late last week, all the comments were, how far are we going to dip? How far are we going to dip? Where, Where is our weakness going to? And I think everyone pretty much expected that, that that weakness was the start of a fairly sustained um, downward leg. And obviously, judging by tonight's action, if that follows on here tomorrow, then that really wasn't the case at all. And it's really one of the reasons why I try very hard not to... Um, form an opinion because you just really don't know what's around the corner so rather than trying to guess what's happening next I try to um, just keep an open mind and, and trade the action but let's just whack some fibs on this very quickly and it almost looks like magic doesn't it look at that we bounced exactly off that 38 fib so picked up a little bit of previous support around here as well and probably some of the tops back here as well almost so it was a fairly um, sort of, you know, I wouldn't say obvious level for it to bounce, but it was one of the first levels we would look to bounce. Um, where I find this pretty relevant, if the US had tanked, obviously that wasn't going to hold, so I don't believe we bounced because of the FIB, but pretty uh, interesting that it's almost to the exact spot that we bounced off that 38 FIB. Alright, let's get into it. I haven't really planned what charts I'm going to look at. I've just I've done my price and volume scan, which I, I have done a video about previously, um, and I've picked up a few that have come up off that. I'm going to really try and focus um, on some of the stocks that are fairly still well off their highs and um, will have some upside, but the f or will have some potential upside at least. But the first one I'm going to have a look at is actually at 12 month highs, and that's BND. Several of these are ones we've mentioned in the Convoy chat today so I thought I'd follow them up with a chart. Uh, there's the 12 months BND chart. Really good volume here as you can see on the breakout. So we've broken through this uh, 12 month resistance and on our way. Um, probably suggest that we could pick up this range here. Um, let me see if we can pick that up with a drawing tool. Sorry I've got the wrong program. Uh, open, but if we picked up that range there, we've got like a 50 cent range there. Probably a similar range here, probably another 50 cent range. So if we picked up that 50 cent range, you could be looking at about a 225 target for Bandana BND. Um, but the breakout was obviously the place to enter. All right, next one I'm going to have a look at. Lots of these look like potential swings. BXB. Fairly steady volume, so no real volume increase on the swing, but looks like it, it with this little inside green day today, it looks like there's a potential swing there. I'd be looking for an entry on a break of Tuesday's high, which is 695, so I'll be setting an alert there. Oh, it's only a couple of cents, a fair chance it'll actually gap above there. Um, and we'll see how we go from there. So hopefully a nice um, high or low here and may test up around those 12 month highs again. All right, next one I'm going to have a look at is GRY. Again, as usual, nothing too fancy on these, just some basic support and resistance um, in price and volume. 
Okay, GOI basically looks to be making a series of higher lows over this 12 months, so it's a fairly steady upward channel here. Um, Goldie from memory, and gold obviously very strong. Been sold off pretty heavily in the last couple of weeks and bounced well today on fairly nice volume. Looks to have got through Tuesday's high, so the swing pretty much in play. Um, and obviously some fairly decent upside if that can can continue. Okay, next one we're going to have a look at is SFR, Sandfire Resources. Okay, again, looks like a higher lows in play. Not a lot of volume on the swing. That's the only thing that concerns me with this one. I would like to see a bit more volume there. But the swing's definitely in play. Um, as far as potential targets for these, again, you could refer back to the Fibonacci's uh, and run it just on this most recent range if you wanted to. You'd probably even pull up an hourly chart and have a look. So there's there's the range there. As you can see, it's actually closed on about 38. 695 odd would pick up the 50, which would also pick up the support on the dip of that candle. Uh, and the next one, probably about 705, which picks up some of this previous resistance there and previous support back here. So that may be a fairly... Um, and picks the support right back over there to the left here back in December as well. So maybe that 705 area between 7 and 705 may be a, a worthwhile target to be looking at for that one. Okay, what have we got next? Let's have a look at CSV. Right, now CSV had a cap raise. Well, I need to get rid of this overlay first. CSV had a cap raise earlier in the week. Um, at a dollar ten from memory, and it's actually dipped below that cap raise. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a dollar ten. It's dipped down to as low as a dollar two here, and swung today. So the aggressive entry was probably the break of that dollar six and a half bar. Um, I got a small few, not very many. Decent volume today, but if we can break this bar here, which is a dollar twelve and a half, it may have some sort of attempt at trying to fill this gap. It'd be pretty impressive if it could, but you would think there'd be some upside to this one. As I said, a dollar ten is a cap raise though from memory, so there will be people in profit above there that have taken the cap raise and may want out, which may slow it down a little. Okay, uh, STB is another potential swing. Loads of potential looking swing charts on the market at the moment. Uh, bounce from basically around this same sort of zone here where it's bounced the last few times. A little bit of volume starting to kick in. Again, we'd like to see a little more to really to uh, confirm the swing. Broke a nice steady downtrend here though, so uh, looks relatively positive this one. Now again, if you wanted to, you could whack those fibs maybe over even this last little range here if you wanted to be quite short term about it. Four dollars looks to be about the first level, which also picks up previous resistance and previous support there, and a round number. So that you would think would definitely be your first area to look at. Closed at 390, I think. Okay, like I said, I'm keeping these pretty simple. Uh, we'll do a couple more. Next one's AOH. This is another one we are uh, we're talking about in the chat group a fair bit today and a nice break there so um, fairly strong resistance here at 31 and hit it for three days and had been unable to break a little bit up here at 32 as well which it's punched through and on really good volume so there was some big volume here as you can see on this last run so plenty of punters getting set in there uh, again if we want to look at targets let's go back to the fibs maybe we run one from this previous range here Alright, the 50 is pretty much around here already, so it's actually tackled the 50 already. Um, 34 looks like the next area that we may look at. You've got this previous resistance back there at 35.5, which also might come into play. So there's a couple of areas just to keep uh, in mind short term. Like I said, a lot of these, you know, if they gap too much in the morning, I'll be out of there pretty soon after the, after the morning gap, I think. And I'll look to uh, reassess later in the day if need be. All right, I don't know how long I've been going for, but I'll do a couple more. This is CDA. This was a report play today. Reported and looked to test and initially break this $1.50, $1.51 resistance, which it's hit a couple of times. It's actually closed under it. So jury's out as to whether that this one can kick on or not. 
certainly some encouraging action early, uh, decent volume as well. So I did actually get a small few on the break. It's dipped back in. I've still got half of that position. I was playing it very tightly today, so covered half as soon as it fell back into the range. But we'll actually look to add if it can break that 51 and a half resistance. Uh, next resistance back here around the 56 level. So that's CDA in a report play. Uh, we might have a quick look at the hourly, see if that tells us anything. Maybe we'll go to the 15 minute actually. There's a 15 minute, you can see it's uh, spiked on, it's actually opened at about 45 after the report. Spiked up to 52 and then given a little back, but all the volume was on the upward leg, so, and very little on the dip, so could still be okay for tomorrow. Okay, and another report play was API. Okay, it's been in a fairly steady downtrend for the last 12 months. Reported today, um, and it's sat on this 30 cent resistance. Fairly strong res there. Have a look at an hourly chart. I think it's hit it a couple of times. So it's hit it three times today. It's also hit it back here last week and hasn't been able to break, but pretty good volume today. So a break of that 30 would definitely get me interested uh, and plenty of upside, obviously, if pundits decide that that report was okay. Strong resistance between 32 and 33. After that, you'd think there's a fair bit of upside if it can get through there. All right, um, one last chart. We'll have a look at CEO. Again, another one that was mentioned a fair bit on in the chat window. Uh, it had news today regarding pick up a Mongolian coal asset, I believe. Massive volume, probably its biggest volume ever. Um, and pretty decent break of this five odd cent earlier res and off. What we might do with this one is have a look at intraday. Uh, there's a five minute intraday. Okay, so as I've mentioned many times with these news plays, if I miss an initial entry, I'll play the break of the first 15 to 20 minute range. So as you can see early, it's spiked up to 5.8, dipped to 4.9. On its next bounce, it only got to 5.7, so a little lower high probably wasn't uh, too encouraging. And then it stayed within that range pretty much all of the day until about the last half hour, I believe. It tested that 5.8 again and I took a position as soon as it broke. So in at 5.9, several of the people in the Commodore chat I would expect were either in that all day or um, entered somewhere around there as well. And a pretty decent run to close. I've got no volume on that chart, so I might just pull up a 15 minutes if I can get some volume on that. Okay, as you can see, a lot of volume kicked in in that last couple of bars as well. So on the break, pretty much this second biggest volume or third biggest volume bar for a 15 minute chart of the day which is pretty impressive on the break so hopefully looking for a gap on open into this one and I'll again probably lock some of that away if it, if it gaps nicely all right that's probably enough for me tonight I'll uh, talk to you tomorrow don't forget to check out our chat window if you're a subscribe member if you're not please subscribe and uh, you're more than welcome thanks